Okay, it says it's live. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our first stream in like six months. Sorry that we've been gone, everybody. We've both Welcome been to extremely our first busy stream with work, so. But we're back, finally. We plan to stay back. Yeah, sorry for the long hiatus. I'm here too. <laughs> So, but during the time off, we've kind of finished up on uh, second key and almost all of the second key checks, and we've actually gone partly into the Doga process as well. So, things are moving along, and we'll be getting through the rest of Genga Sakkan and into some demonstrations of Doga as well today. So, I'm just going to start out with Genga Sakkan. Um, you might need to turn off the top layer. Yeah. So, I have all of the Genga lined up. And this Genga was actually outsourced to somebody else, another animator. So, um, I'll be doing second key checks on this to make sure everything's cleaned up properly. And if there were anything that was it's like if there was anything weird about my checks as well. Now is my last chance to fix it before everything gets cleaned up and finalized. And I'll just play the second key so you can get an idea for what it looks like. There it is all cleaned up with the breakdowns. Um, do I think we'll be hiring people at Tonari in May slash June? I mean, we're looking for people right now. But surely we'll be also still looking for people in May and June. Okay, so I'm just going to grab the Sakkan second, second key check folder, or the second key check folder entirely, out from unused. Drag it down. Hide unused again. Thank you, Pizza. I'm surprised given our long hiatus, nobody else has come out and started doing this kind of content. Pizza Darius, this is, we're currently working on the opening animation for our YouTube channel. So it's a little 30 second original animation that we're, we thought the best way to illustrate the, the process of making anime is just to make something original. Looking for uh, cell template mainly <laughs> right now, <laughs> mainly animators. Um, the... we will have kind of some potential openings in compositing soon, but really, right now, we just need animators. Uh, 
Um, I'll just give you guys the website. Okay, so the template isn't working for some reason. I'm not sure why. So I'm just going to copy and paste it from my original corrections. How much anime could I make with $11,000? You could make maybe a two or three minute animation. If you want it to be anime quality. If it's like really, really low frame rate, you might be able to make a five minute video. Um, Galaxy, if you want to work with Tonari, you need to show us at least that you have some drawing skill and that you at least watched and understand the content on Striving for Animation. So at least knowing how to, to write out basics on X, like timing sheets and knowing how to label cells properly and stuff like that. Uh, we're not necessarily looking for in-betweeners or Doga people, though we, we do have a really limited Doga training program, which we should be starting up again pretty soon. And we're probably able to, to train three, three or four people. But one of the requirements is you can't have a job. You can't be in school either. So you have to have a way to survive while you are doing training. So for some reason the template isn't copying and pasting, so I'm just remaking it really quick. Sorry. About Wait, this. Are you doing it from the layers panel or the timeline? From the layers panel, or also like I can't import it from materials for some reason. I don't know what's up with that. Huh. Are the audio okay. levels okay for everybody? By the way, if you guys see what Will is doing right now, he's locking the layer to a specific color. This is a really good trick. It helps you save a lot of time. It, it basically re pre removes the need to, to hop over to the colored palette while you're doing Ganga. So before, for example, this isn't set to blue yet. So I just have to put it on the timeline. If I draw, with black enabled, it comes out as black, right? Obviously, you would think it it would perform that way, but uh, if I lock this to blue, there's a those are two options for like tone and half tone. All of the lines turn blue, and also I've selected black here, but only blue comes out. Uh, Alex, we will be demonstrating color later on paint man and on csp okay so let's stretch this out tony when you, when you're talking about tracing are you referring to tracing genga or doing doga Uh, for lines having constant size, if you're working on paper, then it's ideal to have your lines to be as constant as possible. Because when you scan it in, you turn it into like all black lines versus white, 
And so when you crush the levels of the drawing like that, the brightness levels, you don't want parts to disappear. So any thicker lines have to be done with um, two lines together doubled up like this. So this double part would be the thick part of the line here. And then they would fill that in and paint like this. How does so, Open Tunes compare to Redis? I've personally only dabbled with Open Tunes, and it's. I think it's a lot harder to use than Redis. Redis is really bare bones. Open Tunes has a lot of features. So, like, if you want to learn software like in an afternoon or a week or something like that, Redis is probably a bit easier. But getting access to like an English version of it's gonna be difficult. They only sell it in Japan. Yeah, I like Redis too, just as a no-nonsense program. OpenTune seems really powerful, but it seems like it would take a while to get into. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just checking each key each keyframe now. Um, Anim Gray asks, do you think anime studios still making hand-drawing animations is an advantage compared to foreign studios which work digitally? If so, what would be the advantages? Uh, I can I can stab at that question. Um, I think hand drawing is probably going to stay uh, for some of the production pipeline. Like, for example, uh, when SOC cons are doing their checks, sometimes it's easier to do it on paper because they can have more line fidelity. But also, like, a lot of the SOC cons are just used to working on paper. Um, but, like, there's no reason that there's not really, I don't think, an advantage or disadvantage other than like control Z for digital people. And you get, well, actually you can, even, you can scale stuff. You can, the light box is a little bit more versatile than a physical light box. And you can also do, uh, uh, there's a thing called tap lorry that you can do where you, if you have like a hand moving across the page, you you overlay those hands. But if it's like growing at the same time, you on digitally you can do you can shrink a previous frame and increase the size of the frame afterwards and meet them in the middle, and it makes tap water a little bit easier. Uh, I'll take a stab at the question too. I'd say that there's big advantages to who putting your production like as all digital or all, all analog, like one or the other. Because for analog animators, people that are in their like 40s and 50s that are maybe the best, that have the most staff and the most experienced people that are doing corrections and things like that, they are world-class pencil users that have used their all, like all of their working life, being able to like learning to use a pencil the best that they can possibly use it and so to ask them after you know 20 or 30 years to say okay i know you're good with a pencil but can you just like do the same output with an entirely new tool that honestly isn't quite as accurate as uh mm -hmm. having a pencil and paper it's really difficult to get somebody to do that especially when they're pressed for time and then the other disadvantage between jumping back and forth is if you have paper to analog to paper to analog you're scanning and printing those drawings again and again. And so yeah. what happens is the alignment can get off. Yeah, and also the, uh, I hear the, I hear that there's complaints too about print offs being too dark. Yeah. <laughs> so like if your shadow fill color is too dark, the animation director will get it and they won't be able to tell where your black lines are once they have it on a light table, you know, because everything's just blackened. Yeah, I imagine that production assistants at this point probably just lighten the prints. Yeah, they do sometimes. Probably. But it's a lot of extra work for them too. Yeah. And like to be able to properly do that, you have to have the experience of printing out something that was too dark and then getting yelled at by the sock con. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then looking at your current cut and saying, okay, well, this second key was a little bit late, and so I'm already behind schedule, but I should probably take yeah. the extra time to lighten all of the drawings up and then print them out. <laughs> um, I have been actually, the past six months, I've been working on a lot of anime productions. 
which is amazing. So uh, I can't tell you guys which what I've worked on so far until the credits come out. But some of the, some of the studios I'm working for do uh, do request that you use a lighter color for the the line work, so that when they print it, uh, it's better for the stock cons. I'm gonna try to get to everybody's questions, but they're starting to stack up. Okay, let's see. Uh... What made you both want to do animation for a career? Uh, for me, I've just always been, I've been drawing since I was a kid and I knew for a fact that I wanted to do art for a career. I just didn't, I didn't know where I wanted to go. I thought like I was going to do fine art for a while. I thought I was going to do video game concept art or something like that. Uh, I ended up not going into art school or anything. So, uh, for some reason I was just like kind of drawn to animation, like watching, uh, studio Ghibli movies and TV shows like full metal alchemist and stuff like that really made me want to learn about the medium and participate in creating. Yeah, for me, I just couldn't really imagine myself doing anything else. <laughs> like, I considered a couple of things, but nothing really stuck. And that's what it is. I have to have this entire folder on it to play. Okay, that fixes it. Okay. William asks, is the Discord group for Doga full-time commitment? Is that why people who have jobs or in school can't join? Yeah, if we're, if you're interested in joining the, the Doga training program, you cannot be in school or have a job or have a job because it's a full-time commitment for sure. Uh, and that's because uh, you guys tried it once with people that do have jobs and you just can't yeah, get we, we tried the it, output yeah. required, right? Exactly, yeah. It's the, the, the pace was way too slow and the, the people we were training just couldn't keep up with the, like they couldn't submit stuff fast enough. So like sometimes you might have like a one or two day turnaround on, on an assignment. And if you have school or other commitments, then you're not going to be able to get that done in time. And you're not going to be able to get through training in any reasonable amount of time. Um, I use Toon Boom. Would that be sufficient for anime work? Uh, or is yeah. CSP better? Toon Boom is sufficient, just as long as you can output a uh, image sequence. Yeah, no one's gonna, no studio is gonna accept a Toon Boom file, but they will take JPEGs of your your cells. Yeah, you can you can animate in whatever you want, Photoshop, whatever. Criti On that note, almost whatever. no studio will accept a Clip Studio file either. So. <laughs> yeah, they will accept PSDs though. Oh yeah, I've had, because I've had, they were I've had three for printing out. Yeah, I've had three studios say that we can just give them PSDs instead of uh, sell JPEGs. Yeah. Um, which is better for two D animation, TV Paint Pro Eleven, or Clip Studio Paint? I'd say they're both great for it. And they both yeah. have their advantages and, dis and disadvantages. I personally like Clip yeah. Studio because it's cheap and it's easy to resize multiple layers at once. There's there's one huge advantage that Clip Studio has over TV Paint that I think, and that's the fact that you can put folders onto the timeline. Yeah. I don't think TV Paint lets you do that. You can do like groups, I'm pretty sure, and then enable and disable groups. But the groups are by like color and you have to assign a color for them or something at least that's how it worked the last time i used it so like a project with this many folders or layers would be just like absolutely ridiculous on tv paint i think mm -hmm. but i mean it's still kind of ridiculous on this it's hard to figure out <laughs> but it's still manageable because you have folders and if you actually read all of the titles you can figure it out mighty asks would you ever do hentai animation or ever considered it uh i've done doga for it 
So... Yeah, I've colored, I've colored and done Dogo on Hentai before. I wouldn't mind at all. No. It's just down to like whether there are good productions in the pipeline that I get offers for or not. Um, do you recommend studying animation in a college? For me, I would say don't go to animation school in the U.S. Because they don't teach 2D. Um, I would recommend, though, going to schools in Japan. Or maybe South Korea. Where they actually teach the Japanese pipeline. Otherwise, like, uh, school, like a lot of Western schools are going to teach like Bojack Horseman and South Park animation. They're not going to teach frame by frame hand drawn animation. Uh, I've got to catch up to like the current question. So I might have I might have lost some of your questions. So if if, I, if we missed some, you can re ask. Um, do you have to know Japanese when working with Japanese studios? Technically, uh, no. <laughs> the amount of Japanese you need to know, I think, is proportional to your skill versus how much time they are running out of. So, like, if they're really out of time, then they will want anyone that they can manage to do the job. But if mm -hmm. they don't have time in the product, or if they have a lot of time and the production schedule is good, they'll pick and choose who they interact with. And yeah. so, in those like, cases, um... having Japanese can help sort of give you a buffer for your skill level. It, uh, I communicate almost exclusively in Japanese with production com production assistants. Some of them speak English, but I, I use like my limited Japanese knowledge plus Google Translate and like uh, this AI Deep Deep L translator that usually helps. Um, knowing like uh, some norm communication business communication norms is useful. Like. Uh, generally, in a business uh, email, for example, you use sama instead of san, and at the end of every email, you put yoroshiku onegai taishimasu, which is, it's just like a salutation that, the, that you always put at the end of every email. Um, some studios will have actually English interpreters, but that's not very common. Um, uh, monster place could I join your classes after I'm done the schooling yes like as long as you have n no other obligations but uh, we, we go in cohorts so I think the next the next group is going to be training like December January and February and then the next group will probably start in March Yeah, Yen uses Google Translate. A lot of a lot of people use Google Translate. Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of works, but if you try to say anything complicated, it falls apart, and then they're like, "What? I don't know what you're saying." But like, if you're a good animator, especially, they will arrange mm -hmm. anything that allows them to get you on their project. Yeah, I recently had a for the first time had a a, a webcam Skype meeting. With the production company and, and they had an interpreter there which was really nice oh, that's good thanks kenny lee um caleb is wondering do you recommend any foreign colleges for anime none that i know of like, I went to a Japanese animation school, and I wouldn't recommend even that, except for maybe the visa requirements to fulfill those. I think Just because uh, a lot of these schools are, like, uh, delivering a product to somebody that wants to get into animation. And so you don't necessarily get the most useful uh, tutelage there. There are uh, some instances I think I would recommend, like, uh, 
if you could get into it, maybe Cal Arts or Go Go Blondes. Go, Go Blondes. Uh, those are like the two kind of premier animation schools. Problem is, you're not gonna you're gonna learn Western Pipeline, but you're gonna get good at animation, and that's gonna at least transfer over once you learn the Japanese Pipeline. Yeah, that's true, particularly for Goblins. And I think like at Cal Arts, you can get like I think they have like some ex Disney animators teaching there. Cal Arts is extremely hard to get into though. And you have to be rich. So, good luck. Um, William, what happens when you're done with Doga training? We'll just have you do work for us. Uh, we don't do Doga yet for the anime industry, but we do do Doga for independent clients. Anime lover, can you do a tutorial of animation? What I mean is a step-by-step -step movement of or objects. There's actually a lot of really good resources already for that. Uh, I would recommend uh, Doki Doki Drawing uh, or some animation tutorials. I thought you were going to say Literary uh, Club for a second. Uh, no, <laughs> I think it's Doki Doki Drawing. They, they do a lot of good yeah. stuff. Uh, also, uh, Check out uh, Animator Survival Kit. It's a, a book by an old Warner Brothers animator. Um, what program are we using? It's a uh, Clip Studio Paint. Uh, they're asking about, uh, or Caleb is asking about your um, pen or your your brush um, where you can get it it's on the clip studio uh, store actually it's free of course but it's available there um, I'll put a link in the description or I guess you can find it there's an anime workspace link in the description right now and if you search under that account the brush is under there too the one I use is like a it's called like an animator checking a Sotcon pen. Oh wait, actually the one I'm using right now is probably that one. So <laughs> Yeah, it's like animate uh, something. Liaru something something something. Sotcon. Let's see. Animate senyo liaru fu en pizza. Yeah, I think that's definitely what I found. I'll put those words into the description. Um, Remy, will, will we be doing this more often? Discussion streaming process. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be doing a lot of streams in the next two days. Uh, do we have any plan on any kind of the scanning and tracing of the trace man? Uh. No, because we don't really have the the technology to do that. You need like a really expensive scanner. Um, Luke's asking this cut's gonna have boob jiggle, right? It's subtle. It's a little, little bit, be, yeah. It's got some boob jiggle. I'm trying to be a little bit tasteful with it, but we'll <laughs> see. We'll see if I have bad taste or not. When you started working in animation, how did you learn the style? Uh, for me, it's I'm still bad at it, but um, <laughs> I improved by copying things very meticulously. And instead of like looking at it and trying to draw it the same way, I found it's helpful if you actually draw over the figures and then sort of make intersecting lines and form drawovers and then say okay so the, uh, the eyes are 1.3 widths apart and then like the nose position is exactly one half and the mouth is slightly below two thirds down or like random stuff like that where you take abstract things like this face looks like this and you turn it into numbers 
I found that's helpful. For me, it's it was really just learning to not underestimate anime character designs. They're not, they're very like dimensional. They're not really flat. Um, and also really paying attention to specifically like how many strokes are in the eyelashes or uh, how many pieces of hair are on the on the forehead in the bangs and stuff like that. How accurate was Shiro Bako to communicating aspects of an anime's development? Uh, it's accurate, but uh, it doesn't let the difficulties get in the way of the fun, I think. <laughs> so it's a lot funner, maybe. Like, there's nobody I don't know, being physically threatened or something. <laughs> Hmm. Basically, there's no despair. <laughs> yeah, less despair. I, mean, I guess there's a little bit, like Emma does have a little bit of despair in that. But... Yeah. But I think it's mostly like about her own skill level. Um, anime lover asks, I've been having a really hard time drawing lately, mostly because of motivation. Can you give us some tips now to keep pushing forward and not losing hope and in ourselves and what we love doing? Uh, for me, it's drawing what you like and then well, drawing what you like while looking at or observing what you like and then sort of analyzing what went well and what didn't and then sort of looking at studies as a way to remedy those things that didn't go well. Uh, my solution is get used to not liking your own stuff. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like, think you'll ever like your own stuff. Like it's healthy to you be just try critical to try to use as what other people are... oh, yeah, Go ahead. Uh, I, I would say just try to use what other people are saying, like other people that are better than you what they say about your stuff and that that's that's kind of been helping me because like a lot of people told me that it's like oh Jared, you've been you've been improving a lot i'm like okay good because all i see is how bad everything is that i'm doing yeah and i was gonna say it's good to be critical about your stuff as you're drawing it but um there's a point that you cross where you're just being self-deprecating and it's not constructive so if you feel yourself like going over that point, that tipping point, then uh, you need to figure out how to more objectively analyze your work and tell yourself, no, shut up, you just need to do this. And then think about how you can do better next time instead of beating yourself up about it as you're wrestling through a drawing. Because I've kind of been there and it's not a good mindset to be in for creative work. Mm -hmm. To be like, Wow, you just totally suck with every stroke that you draw. Hmm. Is it profitable to make animations in YouTube like Yuya Takahashi? I don't know who that is. Animations in YouTube? Like in YouTube videos or? Um, I mean, Yuya Takahashi looks like it looks like he's just a animator on or director of Common Rider or Head Rider, 
common rider and animator on Dragon Ball Z maybe. Um I think if you're making animation on YouTube, you're not gonna make profit just from views. Like for example, if you get a million views on something that you create, like you're probably only gonna make a thousand dollars. And it's gonna cost you like twenty or thirty thousand to make that animation. If it's like a little short animation. So you have to have something besides ad revenue that's getting you the money. Like merchandise. Okay, so that's one frame, I think. I just need to add the shadows. The thing for this frame was uh, compared to A0, A1, part of it is from the Negan and part of it is from my own corrections being off. Is that the head tilts quite a bit, but in the original drawing, um, the hair kind of stays the same. So it's like in between ish. And so I adjusted the ponytail to tilt up with the actual head. So that it doesn't get left behind and just sort of morph. And that was the fault of my correction. And then the other thing that I fixed is because the hat is angled this way, like this, you're looking at the brim of the hat from this side. So you can see this side here, this plane. And that means that this side will be invisible. And so those are the two main things that I fixed. Just add the shadows, and I'm done with that. And it will be ready for doing. Um, is there any job positions in the anime sphere more in line with regular video production skill set? Absolutely. Uh, every studio has video editors, uh, people that work in Adobe After Effects and stuff. Most of like the when we're creating X sheets and animation, that's all just instructions for the video editors. Uh, Twin C animation. Do you both ever want to form your own studio? Uh, I already have. It's called Tonari Animation. We're doing like subcontracting work for. J Japanese studios and doing uh, independent client animations. For me, probably not so much. Just because, like, I don't know if I can provide solutions, like more solutions than problems to the industry. Like, if a studio exists. Because a lot of, like, it's kind of a meta way of thinking about things, but a lot of reason for deflated uh, per cut price is because of the existence of lots of uh, outsourcing studios, which means like the money gets mm. filtered through a lot of different hands. And then the other thing is, if you're out, like not in house, is um, I'm trying to remember his name. He's an animator for Wit Studio, and he has a YouTube channel as well. But he was mentioning how um, for Attack on Titan, when they were trying to outsource cuts, like if they weren't good then they would have to do all of the work to make them good in-house. And so studios end up having to incentivize that extra work in-house by paying more money to the in-house animators. And that money gets sort of taken away from the outsourcing animators. And so to kind of prevent this deflation of how much money animators can make, I think it's like a more moral decision to sort of stay out of uh, making an extra company, like adding an extra company to that mix. I know it's kind of like a bad thing to say right next to, mm -hmm. <laughs> right after yeah. this comment, but yeah, yeah that's my I feel like opinion. we have a different, a different uh, uh, utility for the industry though, because we're getting them access to. We're we're trying to standardize the the global contracting that's happening because like currently 
uh, a PA has to get on Twitter and contact 40 different animators or whatever. Right. That are all going to submit stuff that's not consistent, that doesn't follow their file submission guidelines and stuff like that. So what we're trying to do is be like, okay, you can contact Tonari Animation directly and then we'll get you access to all those people and we'll act as like the filter mechanism to make sure that the stuff that's getting submitted isn't just a, a living nightmare. There's a lot of benefits to sort of solving that as well. Like just the having the ability of connecting uh, foreign talent that doesn't know how to help out and then allowing them to help out also. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of benefits in that sense as well, if it can be executed well. Um, is 6k yen a lot for Japanese studios? Or one cut? For a cut. Layout, for layout? Or... I guess if it's I guess only for layout, layout, then it's on the higher side, I guess. Like, if it's not crazy action or something. The standard would be, like, 2,500. And then, like, the high standard yeah. is 4,500 lately. I've and seen... It's... I've seen cuts get up to 9,000. Yeah, like, I've done cuts that paid... What's 15 times 2,000? <laughs> Big math moment. Uh, Twenty-two hundred. So thirty-three thousand um, is probably the highest that I've gotten for a single cut, and that's for layout only and Gengo only. So that's that times two. So it does scale like if the work is good and you negotiate and they're open to negotiation. Like if the studio has gone over budget and they don't have the money for it, then they can't. But ideally, they want to pay you extra. But it's just imagine yeah, a matter some of people, whether you negotiate that and whether it's actually possible for them. I know some people that won't accept any work that pays less than 4,500 yen. Yeah, that's a good thing to do as well, I think. be competitive too so it's it's difficult and all like there are a lot of companies in like lower wage countries too that for them 2500 yen is is decent we're like in the US or Japan 2500 is not not as not as good What kind of production was that? Uh, that was in-house, actually. So, I'll not get too detailed into that, but yeah. Meligo, is it good money to live off of? I mean, if you're if you're fast enough, you, I, I think animators can make, in Japan, like, as long as you're not like a new animator, you can probably make like up to 25k a year. USD, maybe 30k. But most people probably only make like 12,000 USD every year. And it also kind of depends on what kind of animator you are. There's been a big push towards getting people in-house lately. So studios try to incentivize you doing work only for them, and so they'll give you a half contract, they call it, where they'll give you, I'm just going to speak in US dollars, $1,500 a month plus your per cut pay. Or I've heard of people getting as high as um, 4500 a month plus per cut pay if they're like a good action animator or something like that. So in that sense, it can be really good money, and after the fact, once you've gotten, you know, really good at it, and you have a connection, 
yeah, it's like a retainer fee. Then you can say, oh yeah, it's good money. But just starting out, I was making 6,000 yen per month <laughs> doing Doga with no set pay, just 200 yen per frame. So it can be good money, but it can also be maybe the worst money <laughs> that you could possibly get in Japan. Oh. Nagano's asking, would a demo reel with green eggs and ham or Klaus be useful for a Japanese studio? They probably wouldn't know what to do with it, to be honest. Like yeah, I asked I... a producer at a studio recently in an interview that I was doing, and um, he said that a lot of times they don't really know what to do with video if they're sent it. And so, like, more than anything, they're looking at um, draftsmanship and whether you can copy drawings accurately more than that. So like perspective and ability to yeah, draw originals it, like, and then there's oh, there's something too with the uh, with Western animation that doesn't necessarily translate over to Japanese animation uh, with Western animation. You're going to be used to really, really clean storyboards. Like the storyboards are pretty like you're pretty much just finishing like you're pretty much doing second key when you're doing western animation you're not really really developing the skills to do a first key or layout because the storyboards are so clean so even if you had like a really nice like i think maybe you could if you worked on like green eggs and hammer klaus you probably could do negan for sure but you will be kind of shocked a little bit about how minimal the character acting is compared to what you're used to. Uh, Nagano, Negan is uh, basically cleaning up layout. How do you... Let's see where that question go. How do you make connections in Japan before having a job? Um, you kind of have to get noticed. You can't really go out and solicit because and I don't think I would recommend you do that anyways. I'd just say make good fan work and put it online in this era because it's actually surprising. I don't know if it's surprising, but it's kind of easy to get hired on Twitter if you're competent. So just focusing on making example layout materials or drawings and sketches that looking at you can tell would be useful in an animation production and then advertising those online another thing too is getting making connections with other freelancers because if they know that you're good then they might get overloaded with work and they might be like oh hey i know this guy that could probably do this he's really good or she's really good and that's how a lot of people get in as a, as a recommendation.
Archer's asking if you're keeping the eyes on the same layer as the rest of the body. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to lower the opacity on them when I turn this in, so that Dolga artist, like, so that it's ridiculously obvious to the Dolga artist that these go below the hat. <laughs> A lot of this stuff I'm fixing is just because my corrections were bad. <laughs> yeah, that's a little better. Now this is in between with this drawing, but see this one doesn't have a face, and so the in-betweener doesn't have anything to in-between these parts with as they disappear. So that's not really an issue for this eye because it's totally invisible on both frames, but you definitely want something for at least one of, like this eye on her left eye as it goes under the hat. If the in-between artist is good, then you can kind of get away with it, but a lot of times it'll end up, like, melting. Let's take that from... Um, let's say you make an animation get noticed, but you don't want others to steal your work. I don't I don't really think that's an issue. Generally, people won't steal work to get jobs, and if they do, it's found out very quickly that they're fr a phony. Because as soon as they get a real job, they can't do it. Yeah, agreed. William asks, to get better at animation, practicing the principle of animation, would you recommend animating on one, two, or threes? Uh, if I were to answer that, it's yes. <laughs> Trying <laughs> yeah, them all exactly. out is probably the best one. Yeah. And I think there's something you said uh, about going on ones and sort of seeing how the entire motion would be and just drawing out the complete motion without any simplification or... Um, Kigo uh, turning things into an abstraction. So as the frame rate lowers, you require more abstractions, like smears, for example. Uh, yeah. So to understand why smears exist, even, for example, you can animate on ones to sort of reverse engineer the process. <laughs> so I think it's helpful to use them all because, yeah, they're all sort of inter-reliant. Hmm. Okay, so is that right? I think that's right enough. What are, you, what are you guys looking for? Discord server? Hmm. I think our... I think I've renamed our Patreon. I wonder if it's still patreon.com slash Sakuga Foundry. Yeah, it is. Okay, that's good. Um, we have a Striving for Animation Discord server, but it is application only. 
and the applications are currently closed, though we probably should open up applications pretty soon. The reason it's application only is because we, our goal with the server is to bring people in that are like at least like one year of practice away from actually being able to join the anime industry. We can't accept like super, like people that have just started drawing, for example, because uh, it'll bog us down. There's a lot of, uh, if, if you just Google art discords and communities, you'll find a lot of like people that are working on just basic drawing skills and stuff like that. Oh, you guys are talking about a different server. Okay. Got to get better. Yeah, the 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 Striving for Animation Discord has been an extremely successful project. Like we're actually surprised how quickly people are getting into the industry after they join. Oh, thanks for the super chat, DJS Animation. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's good to be back. You know, the, there's no application fee. It's just it's just like a Google form that you fill out when we open it up. Ooh, how many people have gotten in from the Discord? Let me see. It's hard to count because I'm not exactly sure how if people got in. A, a lot of I think it's at least 15 people. And I think a lot of those people were already on that path to begin with, sort of. But. Yeah. It's just they needed that kind of recommendation. Someone asked earlier if we're going to show coloring, and oh, we're going to be showing that this week. We should. Okay, pretty sure this trace is really good. So no corrections needed. Will, did you have any of that the open source music or Creative Commons music? Uh, I have some on right now. Oh, you do? Okay. I don't have the stream on, so. Oh, okay. If it's too quiet, can um, hear it? I can turn it up or down. I don't know what the chat thinks. Oh, no. it's It sounds good. I just listened to it. Okay. Um, what happened to the Annie Might Ski Challenges? Um, good question. <laughs> uh, we really just kind of dropped the ball on those. Uh, we're as we get back into the swing of things, we're definitely going to start picking back up on the uh, on the Sakaga Foundry website.
Um, Felicia, I'm a bit daunted about how to get into the animation industry. Like I draw, uh, but I'd like to go professional. Any advice? Uh, for me, it would be to draw what they would require you to draw once you were hired. Yeah, so just learn how to make uh, Genga. Um, use the information on our channel. Check out... Uh, I still have am having trouble like recommending resources. Uh, Doki Doki Drawing does a lot of anime stuff. Um... Talk with and you can check out Sak like a Sakuga Foundry. You could even check out like a Genga book from your favorite show, and just sort of study how they constructed the motion, for example, or how they did the layouts. And I know uh, learn from those. in the U.S. at least. I don't know about other countries. They had, there's a bookstore called Kino Kuniya. They they sell import books, and you can go in there. There's I know there's like a Kino Kania in like every coastal region. Like I have to drive six hours to get to my nearest one, but uh, if you go there, they'll have Genga books and stuff like that uh, from famous animators or studios. And those are those are worth. I think they're worth getting. There's a Inoue Toshiyuki effects book that's coming out soon, and I just reserved Ooh. it. It's gonna be good. What happened to the Clip Studio Paint interface? Yes. I think they definitely made it worse. They made all the icons black and white. Makes everything harder to find. But it's sleeker. No. <laughs> like I, yeah. Easy as to soon tell as, the, as soon as that plans. update came out, I. I was like completely lost. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know where any buttons are. They all look different. Like I'm pretty sure like the light box button used to have like a yellow light bulb on it and stuff like that. Chili is asking, do you know how CGI is made in anime? Kind of. Uh, we talk about it a little bit in our software video, um, but they'll use uh, like 3ds Max or uh, sometimes they'll they'll use a. We found examples of them using Unreal Engine to do camera work. Uh, Blender. Um, OLM actually has on their tools website some uh, some CGI tools like uh, crowd simulations and stuff like that for I think for Autodesk I can't remember there's some for Maya I think oh Maya yeah I'll post that link here Do the colors on you're using on the screen right now mean anything in particular, or are they just used for separating regions? Uh, they do matter. Uh, blue lines are shadow lines, red lines are highlights. Green lines are usually used for like uh, gradients or alternative, like like alternate ways of splitting. Uh, the fill colors that you see there. Are just kind of making sure that it's obvious to the uh, paint artist where which colors are getting applied where, like which side of the line to fill in. Is it good to animate in three D then draw over it? I would say. Not exactly. I think there's utility for 3D layouts. Like some studios will actually give you 3D layouts 
if it's like a perspective heavy scene but uh, after you kind of trace that initial mannequin I don't think that you might you might use it too much as a crutch and it'll look definitely like a rotoscoped CG animation Um, Kino Kinia books, where do I search to find a resource? Um, I don't think they have an online store. I think you have to actually physically go there. Uh, Juan's asking, did you make this first on traditional drawing? No, this is all digital. How much do you all work? Uh, personally, I work like 80 hours a week. I've been doing like 18 hour days, seven days a week lately. <laughs> <sighs> Ideally less. <laughs> My Twitter link in the description doesn't work. Oh, um... Yeah, I changed it. It's twitter.com slash Jared H. Martin. Yeah, I reported reported that spammer. Uh well if you're on the account or on the on the main striving. Actually I'll I'll just do it. block the spammer I'm just gonna update the description link yeah okay that works okay the spammer's gone Oop. description link updated stupid windows defender Like I'm actually working right now while during the stream. Jay Udesu, you asked if we were going to do any videos on background painting or art direction. Um, I'm going to have to do videos on the painting process or the backgrounds for this, but I'm not a like trained at all to do professional backgrounds, so I'm going to have to figure out how to do that. I'm going to meet with some of the background staff at OLM and some of the composite oh, staff nice. as well so they'll give me like a quick rundown on it but it's obviously not going to be enough to put me up to professional status but I'll do my best on it
Yen, when will you work on the same anime? Yeah, someday. I keep turning down the big name projects in lieu of doing like really minor ones. So. <laughs> Again, depending on what you've worked on recently, we might have actually worked on one of the same shows. I've been doing like a lot of variety work, I guess you can call it. That's what this is. I'm losing myself in the parts of the hair, like. Juan asks, how many years have you been studying slash working in animation? I've been in the industry since 2012 or 13, I'm not sure which. I've been in the industry since 2020. I had my first anime job in February. Must you speak Japanese to work in the industry? It helps. Like the other thing it helps with is it's good to know if like uh trouble with communication or something is just the fault of somebody being bad at communication and not just like a language barrier thing where like Google Translate told them something that you totally didn't want to. Mm -hmm. And even, even when you have an interpreter too, like if you're having a Skype meeting, they can sometimes get it, the translations wrong. Um, what was the first anime you worked on? Uh, for me, it was Black Clover. For me, it was the Pachinko version of Basilisk, and then Girls and Pencer right after that. Fun fact about p Pachinkos, I heard a lot of them are funded by the Yakuza. Because they own the casinos. Okay. Do you know foreigners with non-animator jobs like PA or Enshutsu? Uh, yes. I know one. Uh, one PA who is... I believe he's Chinese. But he lives in the... In, lives in Japan. I know a lot of Chinese or Korean guys. Yes. Westerners, and maybe one I think the, PA. Yeah, and I think the reason for that is a lot of them are coming from Chinese or Korean studios that, that are already, and it's, or it's helpful to have someone that speaks Chinese or Korean so you can communicate with the Chinese and Korean studios. Jeff in is asking if you do acting workshops or film studies during work. Uh, not really, no. There's not a lot of time to do studies during work, which I really wish I could make more time for. 
So at the very least, I just try to get reference material that's relevant to the thing that I'm currently working that or working on, and then use that as much as possible while working. But there's not really time to do like a study separate project file about that. You just get like six different reference videos together and try to use those references to influence your work to be better. Worst, worst, worst case scenario, you work without any reference at all, and then you don't have a basis for which to increase the quality of your work. I know people that have worked like that for like 30 years without improving. You'd think studios would want to invest in the skill of their animators more, but... Well, I guess it kind of comes down to like... You can't force someone to do an anatomy, like, or maybe not an anatomy study, but you can't force someone to do like a study on, I don't know, Yoshinari explosions or something. That kind of has to come from like your own will to be able to draw those things. So yeah, I don't know. I remember in Shirobako, they, they had a sequence, I think, where they were studying where they, the, they took the animators out and I think they were studying horses or something. Oh, uh, yeah. I feel they like maybe that's for, something that's possible. They do those for shows that cover, like, uh, specified subjects. So, like, if there's a... Like, for Girls on Panzer, they went to a military base to see actual tanks and stuff, for example. Does your mascot have a name? Yes. Our mascot is named Emily. She's a gaijin that went to Japan to work as an animator. Will, was the uh, SOCCON checks done on cut one? Uh, not yet, no. Maybe I should prioritize that one. Yeah, because I'm. that's what I'm going to be working on in my stream. Okay. I think there's only two keyframes. Well, I guess there's, there's more. There's like three on the alarm clock, but... I feel like it'd be pretty quick. Let's see. I guess I'll try the biggest version. <laughs> it's probably the newest.
Huh. Did you delete the corrections from this? It's mm. weird. Let me see if I can find. Let's see. What was the date on that? Uh, they're all the fifth. Hold on a sec. December thirtieth. I just send it to you on Discord. It might not be on the server. So I have all the corrections for the books and the background, but the character corrections are deleted for some reason. Maybe look in this folder. Oh, here we go. Maybe. Maybe not delete it, just move somewhere else. Oh no, that's... Whoops, that was the anime stuff. Yeah, I found them. It's okay. So now... I'm unused. Second key checks. Pull it out. Do I use vector or raster layers? We use raster layers up until Doga. Then we use, Do then we use vector. Um, dense brains, uh, the, the art frame is just on a, on a different layer completely. The yellow page is just to separate the Sakan check from the original drawings. And the blue frame, the blue rectangle is the Clip Studios digital camera. Um, do we know the Castlevania Netflix series, and do you think they use the same method to work on animations? Uh, no. I mean, I guess I know what Castlevania is, and they do not use the Japanese pipeline. They kind of have their own pipeline, I think. If you look at their storyboards, it looks like, uh, Genga, or Ijigen. Like their storyboards, quote unquote, are basically already animated. to actually retrace a lot of this, <laughs> unfortunately. So the Negan's not in there? 
Or is it, or are you just looking no, at the... No, the Negan is there, it's just I couldn't find the corrections for a while, but they were moved to the uh, background okay. folder. Did you scale this up to 150% when you did second key on it? I'm just realizing this looks like one-to-one -one scale. Mm. I think I thought I did. Hang on. I'm pretty sure she was bigger than the layout when I was working on her. Looks like it hasn't been scaled up. So. Okay. So for this cut, because we have a big zoom in, from 100% frame, this frame is 10 inches wide in real life. And to go to this frame, it'll be something like six inches across total for the entire canvas. And so when you put that on a full size screen, that becomes really, really small as a resolution to work for or to work with. So these cells need oh. to be scaled up before they're dull gut. Can you? Can you look at the the Negan real quick because I I'm I'm skeptical that this is the most recent version. It might be. Old I remember, thing. I did this twice. Might have actually done this one three times. There's the Negan. Should have shadow markup too. Is that not in there? Uh, it's there as a layer, but it's not filled in. Okay, so maybe I'm, you just need to give me the update. I know for a fact that that we did uh, that. I did have the shadow markup done. Just link me the updated file. I'll work on cut six until then. I'll see if I can find. See if I can find it. The most animated on in 1920 by 1080. Um, it's actually done in sub 1080p resolution a lot yeah. of the time. So 150 dpi is up. pretty common. And then it's upscaled and they apply an anti aliasing filter on it. Yeah, that was something that surprised me on some productions where they're like, where they're working below. 1080p. I guess it's uh, faster, I guess. I don't know. Less the idea is that field. for analog lines, when you uh, put the line filter over them to make them all black, if you have too much resolution, you actually start scanning in imperfections within the line, like within the color of the line as well. So you'll get a line that's filled with tiny little holes that take forever to fill in. But if the resolution is just low enough that you get all of the lines, but high enough to, or just high enough that you get all the lines, but then low enough to not pick up any of that extra noise, then it makes the painting and trace, digital trace process a lot simpler. And so that's why the resolution is low.
the intentionally low resolution mobile blocks. Mobile blocks, they're doing it more in post processing to sort of replicate the VHS effect. But I mean, it's another reason for like intentionally working in the lower resolution. Have I ever worked on a show without set date? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not so great. Um, I've worked on some shows where like you have to invent character and that character just shows up throughout like an entire 15 or 20 cut sequence. Uh, you think it might be this version 2 one? I'm looking. Yeah, because that one actually has the shadow markup. Okay. Is that one scaled? Let's see. Check the resolution, maybe. Yeah, it looks scaled. Um, maybe okay. I'll double check. <sighs> Layout. Yes, because she's in a totally weird position. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. She's in a completely incomprehensible incom position. Exactly how we want it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I scaled her up and then like just ignored the rest of the... Yeah, that's fine. So this is... Uh, this is called Kakudai Sakuga. And you use it when you have... In this case, there's a zoom in on the cut. A truck up and you use it so that the resolution doesn't look bad when you zoom in on it. And so what that entails is uh, you specify a percentage that it's uh, increased in size. So in this case, we did 150%. And then you scale all of the cells up, but you also scale the background up because the composite staff needs the enlarged background so that they can see exactly where the cell fits on the original size background. So then they paste in the enlarged cell, size it back down to its original size, and paste it on top of the original. So that's what we'll be doing later in comp, but we're doing that enlargement right now so that the resolution doesn't look bad when you zoom in on it. Oh, someone's asking what the kanji is for that. I'll type it in right now. Kakudai Sakura. So second key checks. is the old template it looks like so there's lots of layering issues <laughs> mm -hmm.
variant says i'm an og sub been here since 400 subs glad to see you guys are still growing strong thanks variant yeah the channel has grown a lot i think it's grown 10,000 subs since we last were even we even made a video we appreciate you guys sticking around Okay, I think I'm gonna have to ignore the corrections on this because they're like not here. <laughs> trace on this is a lot better oh wow thank you for the super chat hope hope says sorry for overloading the chat but i enjoy seeing you guys work not sure you guys realize this but seeing these streams your videos and your thorough explanations of the anime pipeline have encouraged me and others to improve ourselves thanks a lot hope glad to hear that if it turns out to be actually useful, that's more important than anything. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get to work together at some point. between the yellow pages and the blue frame. Uh, the blue frame is just like a part of the Clip Studio software. It just shows you where the frame is set to be displayed right now. So like when you output it as a video, it'll be like showing that area. The yellow paper is so that when you have a bunch of sheets of paper and drawings in a folder, and you take them all out and look at them at once, you can tell who drew what. So. The animation director uses the yellow so that immediately you can tell that it's the animation director's drawing. Uh, yeah, we'll be saving the live stream.
Kind of dopey eye right there. constantly using different versions of your CSP template for various projects. Do you guys ever plan on doing an in-depth run-through video of your template file? We should definitely do that, yeah. <laughs> that's a yeah, good no. idea. That's, that's also an easy video to make, too. We could probably do that, like, next week or something. I think what we need we need to actually go through and make sure everything's solid on in there, too. Yeah. Uh, is there a link where we can apply for the Discord server? Not right now. There, a lot of people have been asking about it though, so I might open it uh, before we're done streaming this week. The problem is, is like every time I open it, I have to dig through like 50 applicants and it's an insane amount of work and I'm really busy right now. Like I try to, I try to respond to everybody that applies, so. We usually only open it for like three days and then we get a bunch of applications and then so I might I might open it this weekend for a couple days. A lot of these stuff for second key, if you look at some of these lines, you can see they're sort of cut as the strands of hair go through them. And what happens if you do that on the key is that when somebody traces over it, they'll do this. And then on this side, this. And then the ultimate effect of that is like, it looks like her forearm is all deformed. So I'm connected here. So it'll be a hand like this. So it's important to kind of draw through a lot of the forms if they're obfuscated by other objects overlapping them. And then you just lower the opacity or use a different color for them. So I'm gonna go through and sort of go over all of those sections to make sure that the hand doesn't end up like that. Because we're zooming in pretty much on her face at the start of the video, so this is the section where the viewer, like where the eyes of the viewer go to the most.
Nonbon says, I hear hard studying other people's drawings helps improve a lot. What is the best way to do it? Studying other people's drawings, you mean? Yeah. I would say... Doing rough sort of gesture spreads where you analyze and sort of try to reproduce different parts of the drawing that you think are particularly good. Yeah, I don't... I'm still kind of torn on whether or not tracing is a good... Like... I know for a fact that like learning Doga helped me with my normal drawing and Doga is a lot of, a lot of Doga's tracing. So but I think what really helped was like Negan because Negan uh you're not using the curve tool really and you're you're really having to try to learn how the strokes worked. There's a difference between tracing and reproducing the lines I guess but it's kind of a thin a thin line there and it's kind of easy to fall into like just turning your brain off when you're doing tracing but it's yeah. useful if you want to imitate line style or like types of the way that they draw the lines or stroke order and stuff like that But the things it's most useful for are kind of limited to the finalization of your construction. Yeah, I'll stick with this. Yes, Luis, we are back. We plan on staying back. <laughs> But, you know, the world's a little crazy, so. Well, we have Doga, paint, background, and composition to show, so. Speaking of the world being crazy, actually, Will, has a OLM really changed much? Um, uh, or well, they the have, pandemic? like, they allow you to work remotely if you want to, and in the studio they have like alcohol or disinfecting, and uh, they keep the doors open to ventilate. Well, also, they, they changed when they closed the studio down, so it's closed from 10 now. Nonmon's asking, I've seen a lot of different layouts with varying details on backgrounds. What's the standard for anime? Uh, it's hard to put into words, but mm -hmm. it also kind of depends on the production. Some, like for movies, you have to be much more detailed and uh, precise, but for TV shows, it can be a little bit more loose. I've seen some background layouts that are literally just perspective grids, but that's only when they don't have a, uh, when they're not providing you with a background set tape. I think if they provide you with a set tape, I think they want at least like indications of where the objects are going are supposed to be, like tables or furniture and stuff like that, door doorways, things like that. When I when I worked on Black Clover, they didn't have a background set tape for the, the setting that I was working on, and I just like made up a bunch of stuff based on the manga. And the when they sent me back the corrections, they completely removed 
deleted everything I drew and just put in a grid. And then in the final composite, it was just like some really simple wall textures and stuff like that. How do you guys, what do you guys feel about Blender Grease Pencil? I've been meaning to get into it, but I haven't gotten a chance. Seems really cool, but... I think it'll change how we deal with uh, 3D uh, vehicles and stuff like that. You can make like some really nice looking solid objects that can be rotated in 3D. I would imagine they could probably use that for like instruments, vehicles, backgrounds, something like that. One of the big issues in for Grills and Patzer that caused a lot of headaches during production was um, the CG needs to be finished before they start. Like if the CG and the cell is integrated with each other, the CG needs to be finished before they draw the cell. Otherwise you can't cut, like if they're hanging out of a door or something, you can't cut the cell along a precise line until that CG is completed. And so if the CG parts go over schedule, then you don't have as much time to draw the characters. And so if you had everything integrated, then I don't know, the animator could maybe receive a project file more directly, or once they have the motion but they're still working on like the detailing or something, they can get a bare bones version of it to work with or to work over directly, which would be pretty cool. Okay, I think that's good enough for the first frame. So for this you have Gose split at a really weird section, so I'm going to have to redraw this frame so that it's full body motion.
Let's see, comments. Sorry if I'm not keeping up with the comments. I keep looking down and losing it. Uh, um, I'm working as would... Sakon. Well, actually, I'm not really doing Sakon lately. I've been doing um, Gengar mostly. All right, thanks, Hotbuilt, for stopping by. Quincy is asking what our favorite animes are. Hmm. Vastly varies depending on the genre, but lately I really like uh, Komosuba. I haven't been watching a whole lot of anime lately. Uh... But generally, like, one of my all-time favorites is k -On. That's the only anime I, anime I actually have figures for, or from. But I have a... Full Metal Alchemist is up there, too. I've actually got the... The Crucified Serpent tattooed on me. I don't know how they pronounce it in English. Is that what's on the homunculus? Is it? The serpent? The flame bird, or I think is what they call it in. I haven't seen that show. Flamel or something like that? Flamaru? Is that, is that, is that what you said? E no. <laughs> Wait, what, what did you say? The homunculus? No, Homo not the homunculus symbol. The, homunculus? the one with like the cross with the snake on it. Oh, okay. You're thinking of the the one with, like the Ouroboros and the yeah little triforce thing. Yeah. A lot of people get that as a tattoo. Same thing with the thing that I have. Twin C animation, Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Rewatched Brotherhood earlier this year. Oh, nice. I think it's easier to just trace this stuff over so it's all on one layer. Then I can just go A to B. Is that correct? Jared's been doing a lot of different work over this past year or so. I think he's in a very different position than when he was, like when he was drawing the layouts for this, or the second key. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just I did that over. before my first anime job, I think. Yeah. Given the chance, would you ever work on a Western production? I For might. Me, it yeah. definitely depends. Like if it was like Legend of Korra or Avatar: The Last Airbender or something like that, I would love to work on something like that. But if someone, well, honestly, if I was asked to work on SpongeBob, I would do it. But I, I like SpongeBob. But that's probably the only exception. The rest of it would just be like, I would want to work on like, kind of the anime adjacent stuff. <laughs> um, 
um, if you want to see a face reveal, you can come see me at. If you're in the U.S., you can come see me at a SawaCon in Louisiana. Face reveal. That sounds terrifying. I think we'll do the mattress as go say and have everything else move. Um Sawakon is in July, I think. Website's outdated, but they they got uh, delayed because of the coronavirus. All cons got delayed. What's your sleep schedule working with Japanese studios from the US? Uh, it's terrible. I don't really have a consistent sleep schedule, but like currently I'm sleeping on Tokyo time, so I wake up when the sun is setting and go to bed when the sun comes up. Like it's a uh, almost noon in Tokyo. And I woke up like five hours ago. I just got a phone call. <laughs> okay.
Dong Cheng has some really good timesheet videos. He worked in the industry as well. Worked on Decadence. Uh, those are the ones in uh, Open Tunes, right? Yeah, I did see that series. That's pretty, pretty awesome. Nagano asks, do you have to be working at 100% attention and capacity during the entire 16 hours of the day? Um, not the entire 16, though. I mean, it depends, yeah. but... I feel like once you enter kind of like that flow state, where you're just kind of like zoned out and you're in, in, into the work, that's when time just kind of zips by. That's also yeah. when you make the most mistakes, but... Every day feels like two or three seconds lately. <laughs> Have you guys work, worked on any movies? Ah, uh, what was that movie? Uh, the Icotta movie, yes. I have yet to work on a movie. I got close to working on one though. Is Genghis Sakon usually this heavy? Um, it depends. In this case, the key wasn't clean enough, so it it has to be this heavy, and that's kind of a thing that's illustrative like to keep in mind when you're doing your second key is that if it's not on model then the AD is just about redoing your entire keyframe work. Doesn't and that normally, differ sometimes though from studio to studio? I mean if they're like not doing it they're up. not they're just kind of rushing it to be honest. Mm. Like there are productions you... that would skip it or rush it, but mm -hmm. if the key is off model or um, drawn in a way that it would cause like errors to be made by Doka, then it needs to be fixed ideally. Um, Oshinko guy asks, how do you set your animation on Clip Studio with the peg holes and widescreen box? Um, every studio has a template. That's like just a JPEG that has the peg holes and the wide and the, the the camera box on it. You just start. You just use that as the start of your uh, your work because that's going to be in the correct resolution that they need. It's just the first thing you put into the file. Um, the link to Will's workspace is broken. It brings him back to the homepage. Oop. I will update that. How would you say that your skill sets differ from an illustrator? 
uh, I guess reliance on speed and things outside of character drawing. So like, an illustrator wouldn't necessarily, I mean it depends on the type of illustration as well of course, but an illustrator wouldn't necessarily study camera lenses for example, or like water motion. Uh, scribbling and bucket filling is both really popular, so either one is fine. I guess just the one thing is if you do scribbles, be sure that you don't use a color that um, the Doga artist will confuse with the lines. I think the paint bucket's definitely faster though if you're digital. Yeah, I think so. As long as your lines are connected. Yeah. When there was a question about corrections being heavy, etc. Like there's one example of a animation director I do know at Bones, and he says even if the keys are really good and clean, he redraws his, the eyes, nose, and mouth every time for every frame, just because <clears throat> having those on a separate piece of paper that's from the animation director means that the Dolga artist will trace that separately and they'll be a little bit more careful while tracing it. Mm. And plus you get the sort of drawing line skill from the sock gun that honestly is really difficult to reproduce as a uh, Gengar artist. And this will be, this is actually the teeth. Mouth. I will be right back. Good night, Doctor. Thanks to or thanks for stopping by.
So now we can do the second frame. What's your opinion on drawing eyes through the hair and or just sticking the hair behind the eyes? Um, the reason, well, a lot of the reason why it exists in anime productions is because by doing that, when the hair moves over and across the eyes, the drawing that you continue to in between the eyes with, like, is still there after it's been obscured by the hair once, and so not having it is much harder. It's much more difficult to do a finalized, highly detailed drawing with. Okay, so she's breathing in, so her chest expands, right? So we'll have the entire upper body move upwards. Okay, I'm back. These kinds of like really small motion range keys are pretty difficult to do well. I know um, Megumi Kono for Shelter did some really awesome bed animation. It's easy to do like too much or too little motion range. The same goes for like if you have a character walking from like the chest up in a shot, it's easy to like put too much shoulder motion in there, for example. When I do doga on this, <clears throat> I'm gonna run out of pixels probably to be able to in between. Yeah, I don't know how many. So in that case, is it gonna be like, can I just do bore on, on the lines? Well, you would just have to in between really precisely. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it'll be bude-ish, but you would have to do it like favoring in between-ish forms. Yeah. Like you can't have it yeah, like, up like in I one have direction like and down in the other. A few pixels on the top of the line yeah. along so the. <laughs> you're gonna have to zoom in a lot, I think. Yeah. I, I did a I did, similar uh, in or similar doga on uh, where it was a very minimal motion on uh, the Oda Chan ad break. Where she's pulling her hood up, it's like a slow mo animation, and I encountered that. Yeah, and that's at full size. I actually saw that and noticed that it was jittery. So you're gonna have to be much yeah. more accurate <laughs> than that. <laughs> and like I can understand why. But... I know I did Doga on Akunohana, Flowers of Evil, which was rotoscoped. So they had the keys traced from photos, but when you did doga for it, you would have to adjust all of the keys so that the lines wouldn't be too wobbly. 
And then, like, if you had a rotoscoped animation of a girl standing still, then you would have 50 in-betweens or something of just legs standing there. And so you had to draw it so that the legs wouldn't wobble. It was really difficult. Um, B asks, what if you wanted to freelance for anime but don't fully know the Japanese production process? Would they care to inform you along the way, or should you learn it beforehand? <clears throat> I would in say my for... Experience, uh, go ahead. In my experience, they don't really help you that much. If you don't know it, they aren't really gonna... They might say, like, stuff like, your walk makes no sense. Or, like, uh, they might say, add secondary motion to your animation, or they might say, that is the wrong way to do setifu or something like that. But they're not... They won't hold your hand. Yeah, I'd say the production doesn't really have time to do hand holdings, but it's a reality that both English speaking and Japanese animators don't fully understand or can't execute the process perfectly. So that's why it's kind of everybody's obligation to try to figure these things out as much as possible. Because even if they wanted to teach you, the person um, conveying that information is Seisaku, not a animator by trade. So they don't even really understand the concepts that the staff are getting mad at in studio and then telling them, like, get the freelancers to fix this and that. The Seisaku can be somebody that just started, you know, a month ago thinking, well, what even is that concept that they're supposedly not getting right? So. It's a difficult situation to put yourself and others into if you don't, if you haven't researched enough about the work that you're doing. I'd say if you accept, if you want to accept work when you're still not confident, you could maybe ask them about it. You know, let them know that I am not as familiar with these things as I would like to be. Would you be willing to let a newbie on and sort of work with me as I go along? I found productions to be a lot more, or actually not more, but just quite forgiving, especially like if you let them know what they're getting into, you know, beforehand. Okay, so that needs to stop moving downward. Sixteen, gotta finish this soon.
Okay, what I'm doing right now is another technique that I use on, or all animators use on paper a lot too, for a really low range of motion cuts. And what I'm doing right now is I'm tracing the exact same drawing again. And this could have even been copy paste, except um, the hair would kind of get in the way. But I'm retracing this exact same drawing and I'm going to shift it a couple pixels upward and then make slight modifications to it. And what that'll do is, when the Dog Artist retraces over it, um, it'll get a little bit of imperfections, imperfections to make the motion look more natural. Also with what you've added manually. But the main issue that you avoid is the face sort of morphing or going off model between these two motion ranges. And so even for character acting and stuff, a lot of times people will retrace the same drawing, but you know, with one line width this way or that way for all of the details. Um, is it too late to learn animation at 26? Uh, no, but a Japanese studio won't hire you for training at 26. They're, they're usually looking for people sub 25, but as long as your skill is good enough, it doesn't matter how old or young you are. Yeah, you could start. It might be better to start from layout if you're 26 already. Because then you just need to get good at the animating part, and then studios will offer work to you. Skill always trumps age, but uh, studios are a little ageist for people that are just like starting out beginners, because they they want they want younger people because they're they're more likely to, I guess I guess there's like a a freshness, I think, that, that they're looking for, so they can influence you better. But I, I didn't start uh, my first anime, I didn't, uh, I was 26 when I worked on my first anime. Yeah, and I had uh, language school and Universe, not university, got technical school. So I was 22 or 23 by the time I started as well. And I started really late with drawing. Like I was a second year sophomore in high school when I actually started drawing. And my improvement was never particularly fast. So you can think of me as a good, like, lowest common denominator for if you're at least have this much done, then you can end up continuing to work in the industry. Uh, Luke, if you are um, trying to get a get into Japan with a visa on an architecture degree to work in anime, that that might be a little little tough. I know it's possible though, because that's what uh, Bill Yakushinov did. But I mean, architecture background's great if you want to be a. Uh, uh, I forgot what the actual term is. Uh, uh, what's the term for the guy that that designs the like the background settings? Uh, it's like the art 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 director, basically. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> Luke, you should look up. Uh, this is what the the title is. Uh, I'm gonna type it in chat.
too much. Maybe about right. I'm looking at the motion range right now. They're asking if what you said earlier was Sinmon Gakko. Uh, Sinmon Gakko, yes, that's correct. says I think my biggest problem is that I try so hard to get better for seven years and I still can't draw well <clears throat> I would say that you probably you probably aren't drawing enough would be my guess or you're uh, if you are drawing a lot of volume you're probably not uh, stopping and trying to look at what you did wrong or you're not uh, asking other artists for feedback and trying to learn from them. Like I, I really stagnated from like uh, from when I was uh, twenty to twenty five, but that's because I wasn't drawing enough. The other possibility is maybe you're working without reference. Oh yeah, don't don't try to draw completely from imagination. Like, it helps to get a good balance of having fun and working from things that will make you get better. So, if that ends up being mostly anime or manga, then if you can continue drawing, then that's better than not drawing or losing your motivation to draw. But ideally, it would include like different reference materials and stuff as well. Because a lot of people talk about, you know, like drawing without reference, like it's a merit. It's really just sort of short sighted and limiting yourself from learning things as you draw. Thanks for the super chat, Dura Lumen. It says, Thank you. This isn't much, but thanks for the work you guys put in the channel and community. It's helped me a lot when I was starting out. Are there cases of people getting to to getting a work visa to work in anime without a degree? Yes. 
but you need, I think, four or five years of experience at an animation studio. Like, at, probably at the same company, so that they could see that you actually have commitment. I think, personally, that's the better route to go, but mainly because the, the degree that you get is probably going to be mostly useless and put you in debt. If you're in a country though that has free education though, that's probably fine. In Japan is anime pronounced anime. Yeah, it's anime. Like the A-U-A-O's from Spanish are like a direct crossover. Yeah, but in America we say anime for some reason. It's Probably because right. it's animation, short for animation. Anime, animation. Japan At least we mostly pronounce, we pronounce part. manga right for the most part. Except some people, some people call it manga. I don't know where they get that. Japan's funny with its borrowed language, though. They have, like, the they'll have words with Japanese, like raspberry kiichigo has Japanese for it, but it also exists as raspberry, and also as framboise, like borrowed from English and French. It's like, hmm, when do I use each one? And if it's in haagen ice cream, it's raspberry. If it's a Japanese food, then it's kichigo. And if it's in some French food, then it's rampoise. Very confusing. Ethan asks, how are you guys working in Japan? Do you have any visas? Uh, I'm, I live in Louisiana in the United States, and I'm working completely remotely, but I do want to get a visa eventually. I am in Japan and I have a, or I had a work visa, but it's now a spouse visa because I got married. But I could have continued with the work visa. I just need to prove that I'm getting money constantly. Two Frame Studio asks, are you guys working on keyframes? Yeah, these are corrections to the keyframes. And for, if you mean in everyday work, then uh, yeah, I'm mostly doing keyframes now. I had a period when I was doing mostly uh, corrections, mostly Sakkan corrections, but I really didn't like it. So <laughs> I think they've shifted me to allowing me to do more layout, which is nice. OLM is a very, very nice studio. How much do you need to make to maintain a work visa? Uh, they say at least minimum wage. So in US dollars, that's about 1,600. And if you're from a country with a higher standard of living, wherein you're most more likely to want to work under the table to earn more money for your family, they recommend you having at least $2,000 a month as your income. It's more lenient if you're from like say Southeast Asia or something, and they know that you're absolutely not going to be forced to do like extra work other than what you applied for on your visa. Okay, guys, pause on the questions. I'm gonna try to get through all those. That was like seven questions at once. Okay, um, how did you get the original work visa, Will? Um, I went to a What is it? Technical school in Japan, and then applied for a studio. And then, upon receiving a um, receiving acceptance from that studio, I applied to for the visa 
while um, turning in documents providing like or proving the validity of that studio as a company that makes money and stuff. Uh, Twin Seed, do you plan on moving to Japan? Yes. Uh, the route to get there is still unclear. It's either going to be I'm training with a studio over there, or uh, when I have enough money, I'm going to found a studio over there. Uh, Will, have you done Doga Kinsa before? Doga what? Oh, Doga, Doga Kinsa. Kinsa? Yes. Just a little bit there. It was for the Dunboru Senki movie. Um, two frames ask, is there a hierarchy? Do people typically work on in-betweens before keyframes? Um, that used to be the case, but not so much anymore because they can't pay Doga artists to exist domestically anymore really that much. Like they exist as a super minority within Japan, but more and more people are starting on second key. And layout as well, but ideally you did Doga because you had the opportunity of looking at the layout material from professional animators and then taking notes on how they wrote different notations or how they constructed the motion. So the closest thing that you can get to that is second key, where you're cleaning up the keys of somebody else. And so really, I think it's better to do that first and study the layouts that you do the second key for. But there's people doing layout just right off the bat as well. So. Yeah. Theo's it wondering if your is. wife is an animator. Uh, no, she's a normal. I don't know if that's normal or abnormal, but... She has a <laughs> office job. She's a Kaishang. Yes. Yeah, that's called. Okay. You guys can continue questions, sorry. Um, Will, how's how much longer are you gonna be streaming? Um I need to take a break at one or one thirty, so I need to finish this cut by then at least. And then I can be back around three, I think. Three or three thirty. Okay. I'll probably still be streaming by then. Okay. Yeah, just but I'm gonna I'm gonna go for like thirty minutes to eat lunch and Okay. Sounds good. Shower and stuff. What time so is it I'll there by the back way? Here? It's yeah. nine thirty PM. PM, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm on your time right now. Yeah. So, so enjoy your 9.30 p.m. Time. lunch. <laughs> yeah, well, technically, it's since I woke up like the same time you did, it feels like noon right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be back. All right, see you. Was I ever afraid of drawing, like being in a fight or flight mode? Yes. I was kind of constantly in that when I was doing animation director corrections, mainly. Because I felt like I was working too far out of my comfort zone. So yeah, I was terrified to draw, but also knew that I had to draw to keep up with the schedule and stuff. So let's give the hand a little bit more motion range.
is it possible to make a decent income working only as a freelancer? I think if you have that work style, then you can, yeah. Like I know people that make, I'll just say in US dollars, about $4,000 per month. But their work style is very economical. So they're not doing like the fancy cuts that sort of foreign anime fans see and get inspired to do animation for. They're doing, you know, like just mouth flaps and stuff like that. Bend this finger. Otherwise, the hand's just floating upwards. What I want is for the hand to be sort of contracting, and so the fingers bend and push the back of the hand up. So I'm thinking about these little tiny, like, per pixel things. You be a professional for many years as a freelancer, but working from another country without moving to Japan. Uh, yeah, I think so. I know people that have half contracts while working overseas. And making pretty good money. I'm looking at the motion range for the breathing animation. I think this is around where it's going to have to be. Most studios for layout and second key, they pay by cut. And Doga is paid by drawing. Doga and paint is paid by drawing. So this is actually over the stomach area, so despite being kind of further down the drawing and out of the way of things, it's probably one of the areas with the biggest range of motion. So I have the other drawing sort of visible in the light table, and I'm looking at 
the distance from the line that I drew in the first key to the distance, or like to the line in my second key. So. Let's give the shoulder a little more motion too. Got a lot of in-betweens for this. Uh, yeah, this is a continuation from the previous streams. In the last streams, we were doing second key. So this is the corrections on top of that second key. So it's the exact next process. There was a um, director check, an episode director check of the second key just before this, but there wasn't any actual corrections on top of it. So nothing to stream. In cases where the episode director does do corrections though, um, there'll be things like if the second key artist did some frames that were adjusting their correct or their drawings to the animation director's corrections, and maybe they got the expression wrong, or the mouth needed to be open but it was actually closed, then the episode director would go in and put corrections over top of the keys. And those are instructions for the animation director to fix them up so that the character doesn't have the wrong face or the wrong mouth. Yeah, I have that problem with Clip Studio skipping frames. Um, I just render a lot. Just rendering it and watching it is the easiest. Because I really don't like not being able to tell. I hear um, TV Paint has a little bit better, smoother playback. Your line wobbles while drawing long curves, what to do? Um, for me what helps is if you do lots of life drawing, which is like sort of looking at a shape and then trying to draw a line that imitates that shape well. And what that gives you good practice on is just drawing really long contours. And the other thing that helps is looking exactly where you want the line to end. So like if I'm drawing a big stroke like this, and I wasn't looking at the end there, it's kind of like way off. 
But if I actually train my eye to look at it, then you can... Like, it's easy to look at your pen tip and not where your pencil is going. And your hand ends up going where you're looking, so... I found that that helps. So yeah, looking in the right place and training with uh, contour drawing from life. What does the episode director do aside from create the storyboard? Um, they don't always create the storyboard either. They can just be there to adapt the storyboard to layout. Uh, some aren't good at drawing, would they still do corrections? Yeah, they do corrections for intent and like direction. And then the Sakkan does the drawing part, the draftsmanship part on top of that. It's kind of a, like people don't talk about it so much within the industry because it's not so nice to say, but um, X animation director and Shitsu are kind of like, oftentimes they focus on the drawings too much, like the drawing side of things. And they're actually worse for production than an and Shitsu that's just bad at drawing and will give you something very rough. But also quickly, they'll give it to you quickly. It's easier to train your brain on the wrong thing when you're checking, you know. I want this drawing to be clean or on model, not I want this character to have this kind of face. Slightly more raised eyebrows matches this line better. It's like kind of a different brain to use. background painters work in studio um if the studio is big they will have them in-house yeah but a lot of times they are somewhere else i think there's a lot of demand for it but the pay is also really low so it's being increasingly outsourced towards like southeast asia and other um what do you call it outsourcing companies But it's like less than a hundred dollars per background, depending on the production, so you have to be very fast and very good with the backgrounds in order to make money in that profession. I have a lot of respect for background artists that can make it. Achiro, if you fail application, you can try again the next year. Yeah. And the other thing is, if you get employed through a different route, sometimes that studio will contact you later to do work for them. Have I ever thought of making manga instead of anime? Um, I honestly know. <laughs> I'm just really bad with story. I've never had an interest in creating it, so... Yeah, I've always just wanted to be an animator. What's the Sakkan? The Sakkan is the animation director, so they're in charge of the draftsmanship of the entire episode. So they'll look over all of the cuts and correct all of the characters and backgrounds so they're on model.
Got a couple more hairlines, I think, to draw in here, and then I'm done. That moves up with the shoulder. Shoulder stretches upward, so this fold here will also stretch outward as it's pulled. I think. I'll try to think about those little subtle differences. Really good animators are just so leagues better at doing these kind of really subtle things. There's an animator I like, um, Ryo Araki, and he does. Like if a character gets punched or kicked, they have a ripple that goes over the folds of their clothing. Like it'll convey the impact with that rippling fold. Very cool. Yoshinari had piles of cuts because he couldn't let the small details, yeah. yeah. Um, and even Yoshinari has a style that's very um, forgiving to small details. If you compare him to someone like Okiura, his motion style. And the thing is too, you know, like, this whole frame is 10 inches in real life. So if that 10 inches is on a 60 inch screen, that's a whole lot of small things that are getting really big the moment you try to watch it on a TV. Uh, yeah, I use a tablet. Well, it's a screen tablet. And my favorite animator, like Western animator, I guess, maybe Glen Keane. Do I have a goal or quota in mind while working on layout or a cut? Um, you mean for number of cuts? I think it depends on the type of cut I'm doing. If I'm trying to make it as good quality as possible, then my sort of the energy I use to think about the goal kind of gets diverted to how to make it look better. But in a lot of cases, you have to work with a deadline and with very big time constraints. So, yeah, a lot of times I'm thinking about a quota, you know, like. I have to finish this in three hours or something like that. Okay, I am back. Hey, welcome back. I'm just finishing up, I just have to finish the shadows on this, and then I can pass it over to you for Doga. Okay, great. This Doga this cut for Doga, it looks, and it technically is one of the easier ones, but it's also the maybe the most difficult one to execute well, just because of the precision that's required. So all I can say is good luck on it, <laughs> and zoom in a lot. If the range of motion is just so incredibly small, we could put it on fours and reduce the amount of in-betweens. I have a question for people watching. We get, we get contacted by uh, tablet manufacturers every so often to do reviews of their products. I don't personally like doing that kind of content, but is that something you guys would be interested in seeing, or do you think there's already enough of that out there? Hmm. 
Good boys. <clears throat> Does Oki or Adobe? Well, they, they don't. Stuff. They don't give us money. They they would just give us a tablet and be like, make a review video. I would be <clears throat> if we ended up doing that though. Like I would definitely uh be harsh on it. <laughs> If it's bad, I'll just say it's bad. Don't buy it. But... What I really want is I want Clip Studio Paint to contact us. Because we... <clears throat> We pretty much shilled them out like crazy in the software video. We didn't get any money for that. <laughs> I actually, actually contacted them and asked for sponsorships, and they said that they're not interested in sponsoring animation content. Which is a lie, because they sponsored uh, Nika's videos. Trying to figure out whether this shadow should move up or down. And the blanket might slide down <clears throat> on the top of the slope, maybe. I mean, this one here it should be compressed by her chest as it expands, so technically it should be moving down, but you yeah. could also think of it as being pulled upward by her chest. Expansion. Yeah. It's difficult to uh, figure out which one looks like it's moving in 3D space. <laughs> mm. That's the really difficult thing with these low range of motion keys. So maybe I'll just fill it in. Um, two frames, yes, we know, but Nika's actually in our uh, <clears throat> in the striving Discord. And Nika's stuff is great if you guys haven't seen it yet. Yep. Big recommendation. Uh, Discord's not public. It's a uh, application only. Okay. I'm thinking this elbow range is moving too much. Was there any changes to the alarm clock? Uh, I'm fine? not going to touch it. Okay. Yeah. If there's an issue with it, because it's only three, three frames as well. Right? Two? Three. Yeah, there's three. Yeah, I think it's three. It's easier to correct later. And also, you know, you don't look at it really so much as the. Yeah, it's the character. character. <clears throat> uh, Steven, our Discord uh, is application only, and I announce on Twitter when and on sakugafoundry.com when we open it up. Currently, the applications are closed. But we are likely, a lot of people have been asking about it, and we might open up this weekend. It's just every time we open up, we get a ton of applications. And it's hard to, to get through all of them. Yeah, I think that's better like that.
Okay, I need to hurry up and finish this. Taking too long. Does every studio use the same Ganga colors or does it change? Um, it changes per person, part. actually. But there's general mm. rules that they want you to sort of keep. It's like, while they don't match it like exactly per RGB level, there will be... Most people use a kind of pale orange color and they use it for the skin color. Most people use like a pink or a greenish color, light green color, so it doesn't, that can't be confused with the blue or red lines for the hair. Some studios will dictate that you need to use specific colors, but most of them don't. Yeah. Like, I think, who was it, who made the dumbbell? Um, I think Kobo. they had like a, yeah, Doga Kobo, they, they use the blue and red. And that's it. Um, 8 bit just uses a uh, orange. They don't even they don't even use they don't differentiate between the hair and the clothes and stuff. It's just orange for everything for all the hmm. shadows. No wait, they they actually do have other colors. They use green for the black fill and then yellow for highlights. Do we only take people who want to be animators on the Discord? Yes. I should probably color these polka dots too because it's really difficult to tell like where they are in the gaps between the hair and stuff. It's an accident waiting to happen. Like here, can you see this red line? Like where? There, <laughs> right here. That's a dot, for example. <laughs> mm. So in cases like that, not having it is yeah. just so difficult to get right for the dog artist. Oh yeah. Firefly is asking how about painters. I'd love to do Shiage. Um Well, here's a here's a question. Do people uh people that work in Shiage, do they come out of Doga or do they, do they just start with paint? Uh they start in paint. There? Actually. Yeah. And then paint um the career pathway for that goes up to uh, cell checker or um, color design color design right? yeah <clears throat> uh, my Twitter it's twitter.com slash Jarrett H Martin uh, and I'm sure Will will re retweet it if the applications are open. And also, you can check on uh, sakagafoundry.com. We'll post it there, too.
Yeah, if you guys think this stream is worth getting more people into, feel free to share it around on social media. We'll be streaming pretty much the entirety of the next two days. In the stream that I'm going to do after this, I'm hoping I can get Doga and Paint done during the same stream, but we'll see. I might un I might be underestimating how long this will take. You should probably take like an hour uh, at least on each of these in-betweens to be accurate enough, I think. Like if you were super experienced, then you could do it in maybe like 20 or 30 minutes per frame. But otherwise, like, the fidelity just wouldn't be there. Mm hmm Which means that could be, like, a 12-hour project, then. <laughs> yeah. Or how many, how many frames is it? 1, 2, you know, 3, like 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. <laughs> we... That's why I was suggesting maybe fours, because if it's 17, also the range of motion is like <clears throat> zero. Do you think it'll look fine on fours? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's do that for sure. <laughs> it's on twos. It's on threes right now. I think it's on threes. I don't have the timesheet with me, but on the timeline, it's on threes. I'll send it to you real quick. Okay. I think that's it. I need to start downloading music for my stream. I wonder if they've added anything good. Yeah, YouTube I went through the YouTube library. library and just downloaded all the stuff that seemed a little bit better than last time. But... Worst case scenario, regardless of whether it's copyright free or royalty free music, it'll sound like something that isn't and the, <laughs> the video will get demonetized anyway. Yeah. Just because the AI picks up on it. So far it's been pretty safe, I think, with the YouTube library. That's good, because all these are from it. All the songs that I'm using yeah. from that. Yeah, uh, just a warning to any of you guys that make videos, do not ever use music that says copyright free, royalty free, blah blah blah, open Creative Commons. If it says that, then it's probably a scam. <laughs> and they just want money from your video. Um... MRN FTZ asks, do you do the color scheme in every frame or only in keys? Um, for Doga, you do it in every frame as well, actually. But you don't do it in a way that... Um, well, I guess because we're doing it digitally, it, it's not the case for this as well. But if you did this on paper, you would do all of the shading on the front of the paper, where the shading would be inseparable from the lines, you know? But when you did a doga, you would shade it all in on the back for every frame as well. 
and it's kind of an important process because you realize a lot of mistakes that you made when you're doing that shading process. You know, like maybe you shaded um, or in between one of the parts with the wrong part. And you didn't realize that until you've colored it. So you do it all on the back if it is on paper and you do it in a drafting layer, a separate layer on Doga. <clears throat> for those of you that are sticking around for the next stream, do you have any, any suggestions on type of music? I'm downloading songs right now. Smooth jazz. I like jazz. Almost missed the shoulder on this. It'd be really weird if she was laying in bed and the shoulder wasn't visible. Details so tiny. hairs too. Shoot. Go under like that. Nicholas says, I haven't been on the forums in a while. Are new videos on the way? Yes. <laughs> uh, when I, whenever I stream, I'll show you guys uh, the, the, the depth of the next video, the X sheet video, but it's been a long time coming because it's going to be a long video. Also, I've been really busy and I've been procrastinating. Have you ever denied a project because you had no idea how to animate it or because it was too complex? Yes. Same here, yes. It's kind of a... I kind of see it as a personal responsibility to not accept things that you don't have the capacity of at least sort of stretching yourself a little bit and figuring out how to do. You have to kind of judge whether, yeah, okay, I can sort of stretch my skill a little bit and accomplish this versus even if I, you know, put in the extra effort that this is going to be, it cause more issues to the people checking it than it solves. <laughs>
Okay, let's see if I'm missing any parts, and then I'm done. Yeah, whenever I accept anime work, I pretty much always exclusively take stuff that's going to be like limited animation, like lit flaps. I rarely ever do actually like full motion animation, unless I'm doing a Negan. Like, I don't think I would ever accept, like, at least not for a couple of years, I don't think I would accept any action cuts. Noxdud says it's rare to see animator work in live stream. Yes. And the reason for that is animators are usually not allowed to stream their work. Because uh, if it's like anime studio work, it's all under uh, non disclosure agreements. But luckily, when we're making an original animation like this, we can stream it. Okay, so can you guys check with me for missing parts? Gotta see if I've messed anything up. Do some flipping back and forth. Ah, I already see some missing dots here. So now I'm outlining all of the parts that I want to be copy and pasted with the other frames. It's called a uh, goal save. I'm gonna write Hoka goal save. Uh, this is on the wrong frame though. Doi! So, two. On frame two. And get the red from there. Here. Put that on frame two. 
Polka A1 equals A. And that basically just means that the Doga artist is going to trace A1, but they're going to split it into two uh, layers so that then you can copy and paste the non moving parts onto the moving breathing animation. One thing that I'll add to this is this fold is on the contact point of the pillow, so having that animated with the pillow will help it look a lot better, I think. I think it's actually part of the same drawing. Okay, final check for errors. collarbone area is actually kind of deforming. Now it's got the same motion range as the shoulders around it. Okay, any missing parts or weird motion that you guys can see? Noxstud says how did you manage to get involved in Japanese animation projects? Uh, for me, I just went to school for it and applied. Um, for me, it was probably making this YouTube channel and getting recommended by people. Try this with teeth color and 
If it looks weird, we can switch it back to mouth color. But for now, there's like sometimes shows that do it with the teeth color on the small closed mouth. It's kind of cute when it works well. So hopefully it'll work well. But if not, I messed up. And her collarbone is disappearing here. Silly question, are you both in Japan? No. Uh, Will is in Tokyo and I am in Louisiana. Okay, I think that's about it then. Is each frame a folder? Yeah, I have them as folders here. So it's like this with a bunch of stuff in here. <laughs> Okay, so that was second key Sakkan check or cut one. Um, Jarrett will be right back with another stream doing Doga, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, um, I'm gonna post the link to the new stream uh, shortly. Okay, so thanks to everybody that joined in. Thanks a lot to the super chatters as well. Um, I'll be back later today after. Jared does his Doga stream to do a little bit more of the Genga Sakkan. Yep, thanks everybody for watching. Thank you. Uh, stay in chat, I'll post the link in, in chat. And then uh, I'll also retweet it. Okay, see you guys.